seven. So sorry for the technical difficulties, everyone. So in the room here, we have Chief Hawk, Carolyn, June, Jack, and myself. And looks like online we have David, Brian, Rita, Matt, Falco. I think that's it. Um, so welcome everyone, our August uh, personnel board meeting. We will have a short meeting today and then we'll go into executive session to prepare for the interviews that begin this afternoon. Um, so if you look at the, uh, I guess the first order of business would be to um, discuss the minutes from the last meeting, the July meeting. So hopefully everyone has had the chance to look at those. Any comments or questions on those? I had a question. <laughs> Um, we discussed a new question, but I can't remember if it was in the um, executive meeting or in the regular minutes. Do you remember that? I do. And in fact, it is on the final interview guide that I sent. Yes, out. I saw that, but I can't remember if it was at executive session or in the regular meeting. I think it was an executive session because Great. we were advised not to discuss it during this session. Okay, but yeah, thank, you. It. thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for bringing that up. Are there comments or questions on the minutes specifically? Okay. All right. So do we have a motion to approve the minutes from July? I make a motion to approve the minutes. A second. I second. Okay. That was Matt. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Unopposed. Okay. That passes. Um, which reminds me, um, we don't have Mark. Mark was, oh yeah, I see Mark now. Okay, perfect. So Mark is here. I'm here. All right, perfect. <laughs> I was going to say you were emailing, but um, didn't see you on initially. Okay, so the schedule as it stands now is listed on the agenda. Um, do you know, Rita and David, which day or times you will be observing? I can be there at all of them, except next week, because next week wasn't in the original list of dates. The original list of dates were Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And I would have had a problem with Saturday, perhaps, but I would have worked around it. Yeah, OK. We added more dates um, because there were so many candidates. We didn't expect as many candidates. So, and. Maya Culpa, I was originally thinking we had to interview all of them, but then I went back to the ordinance, it was 12 plus two. So we needed three dates. We had two with the, there was someone else who could make this Saturday. So we only had two, so, okay. So uh, but we were never informed of that third date. I mean, none of us had a chance to say whether we could make it that I know of. I, I'm just asking. Oh, that, that may be the case. I may have only reached out to Brian and Matt when I was asking about additional dates because they were the, yeah, I, that's, that's possible. I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. I just wondered. Yeah, and Amy, if there, um, if, if I can join by like speakerphone, I could probably go to most of the interviews. Um, but uh, I do want to, uh, I pro we probably should get input from Falco before discussing any of that kind of stuff. Um, if it's in person, I know for sure I can't make the, you know, any of the morning slash daytime ones. Um, and with that being said, I don't know if it would make sense for me to go to the interviews tonight. Uh, if I can, if I know I can't make any of the other ones. Yeah. Well, it's up to you. I mean, if you wanted to observe some, but not all, that would, that would be fine as well. Um, but the question about um, listening in, I too can make, I can make um, tomorrow and the next day, but next week I would only be able to <clears throat> listen in. So I don't know what that means in, in that future reference for executive session. Okay. Falco, should we discuss this in executive session or can we continue? Can you give us guidance? On no, what? yeah. We the, those issues should be discussed in executive session, yes. Okay. Sorry, I took us off course. Okay, back to the agenda. <laughs> um, the candidates who will be interviewed, who will be conducting, this is more sort of um, kind of factual 
summary of our last meeting, I would say everyone should have, everyone on the personnel board should have received the um, candidate information via a link from Sergeant Egley yesterday afternoon. So hopefully you all have that. If you can't access that, let me know. Uh, reminder from Falco about the Sunshine Act and not emailing back and forth. We had some of that between the last meeting and today. So just something to pay attention to. Wait, am I still? No, I, the minutes in the agenda are similar. I was like, wait a minute, am I looking at the minutes? Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> so, and then uh, community engagement. Well, okay, so before we turn it over to Chief Hawk for community engagement updates, anything else that should be discussed as a matter of public record or let me phrase that differently anything else we should discuss before we move into executive session okay i will just say the timeline for this um the prop from a process perspective so we'll be doing the interviews this week and next and then it will take a couple of weeks and talking to sergeant Egley for <clears throat> excuse me, for the um, background investigations to be complete. And um, we will be informed if there are any, this is the full background investigations that the police are doing that we wouldn't have um, that are privileged for police officers. And we would be informed if there's anything that signifies drugs, alcohol, or moral turpitude, that's, that's the last phrase. So if there's any issues there, we'll be informed. Otherwise, once the interviews conclude and we have all used our rating sheet and compiled our scores, our part of the process is complete. The, um, again, unless something comes up during those background investigations. And then it, it goes to council who will interview however many candidates they are seeking to hire. You know, um, how many we're going to hire? Last conversation was three at town council. This year? Well, that's what Trish brought up the last meeting. She said we have to get three. So I, I've heard from one to three, whatever council will allow one, us. One, but I, I know we need, we need three. more than one. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's sort of the timing, the process. <laughs> Any questions on that process at a high level? Yeah, what if the people, what if the people, um, you know, they don't accept the offer? Like, how do you, do you just kind of just keep going down the list progressively? That's a good question. Yeah, I guess, yes. Well, and the list, not the list provided by us, which will just give council the names of who they would want to interview, but the list that council finalizes to say we select these. So we might say, here's our ranking one to 14, they might interview the top six and choose numbers one, two, four, and five from our ranking, for example, or, or one, two, and four. To do the rest. Or you may or they could choose to do all 14 of them, I guess, so, yeah. So you could take a question. Don't forget to lean in, people. Your voices are getting mumbled. <laughs> <laughs> I might have this incorrect, and I hope Falco will correct me if I do, but if we're following civil service, uh, once you guys finalize the scores, <clears throat> you aggregate the oral and the written scores, and you come up with the final score, and you assess veterans' preference points, I believe the top three would be interviewed for the first position, and you would have to select from that top group of three and if there's a veteran in there, I think uh, Falco could speak to it probably. You probably would have to select that veteran. And then if you wanted to hire a second candidate, um, number four, am I, do I have this wrong, Falco, or is this just strictly for promotional processes? Uh, no, I, I apologize. I don't have the ordinance in front of me. I was going to have to go online to check it. But I believe that in the ordinance, it does say that the commission certifies the top three as you're describing and yes if there's a veteran in that final pool of the top three then uh, as an entry level hire they would be the one selected 
Yeah, I'm, I'm almost positive that's right from what I've looked at. Um, you know, don't quote me on that, but I'm almost positive that's right. But then <clears throat> yeah. the, the question I would have that, that arises out of that is if we do fill multiple positions, how, <clears throat> how does that work? Because if we just certify the top three and town council is filling three positions, then we've already made council's decision. So I'm assuming that for each position, essentially council would have to appoint one person, uh, then it would go back to us to resubmit the next top three people. And then, you know, if there's a third position being filled the same thing. That's just my guess as to how it works. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I again, I, I believe the ordinance just specifies the top three as the final list of the eligibles. I'll, I, I can confirm that um, when I get to the office uh, as to whether the fourth person then slides up you know, once you make that first appointment. Um, normally, though, if you are certifying the top three and uh, the community needs to hire more than just one, you're making selections again from that top three. Um, so you're down to two, you make a selection from those two, you're down to one, you know, you're making that selection. So, uh, but I can confirm that later, uh, that would be an issue for the, uh, the council. Uh, and I'm sure the, the town solicitor could weigh in on that as well. Um, but right now the commission's job is to identify those top three as a result of this process. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think our job is to get the top three, you know, the process with how the town then handles that, you know, we'll have to figure out. Um, but the immediate thing is we need to come up with the top three. Yeah. Okay. Can you guys hear us, Chief? I think, did he say like you do like the top five and you submit the top three and then once well, they pick one, number four moves up? Perhaps, but I, I'm unclear as to what certify means. So my understanding is we interview these 14 people and based on our scores and then the compilation of those scores and then the addition of veterans preference points, we create a rank list of one to 14. So what then, well, and then of course the background investigations, there might be, hopefully not, but there might be a person or two who fall out based on the background investigations and or the moral turpitude issue. but. Once we have our final list, let's say there's 13 people, they're ranked. So, so what else, Falco, would we need to do to certify? Well, certify is just indicating then who those top three are. Uh, and again, I, I don't have the ordinance in front of me, but I think it is clear in the one section that it is the top three from which the selection is made by council. So um, Again, I can confirm that after this meeting, but uh, that's my recollection of the ordinance. Yeah, so in other so words, I mean, we can- just then indicating who those top three are. Right, we can rank, you know, if we had 50 candidates, we could rank all 50, but town council is only gonna see the top three. Hmm. And, you know, town council makes the final decision. They're only gonna see the top three, no matter how many rankings we do. And that's just why I was curious how it would work with multiple positions, because yeah. we don't we don't send them our whole list of rankings. We just say, here's the top three candidates. Got it. So the question really then for Falco to investigate is to, if they're going to hire three, is it then de facto the top three that we have ranked or is it they select from the top three and then that person moves into the selected category and then the next top three are considered for the second appointment and so on. Yeah, and, I, and I will confirm that, yes. Okay. I know when we hired two officers one year, this is like three years ago. We picked the two from the top three and the two more will move up on the list. So, so you always yeah. had three to select. Yeah, and, and that makes sense because what if town council wanted to hire four? Mm -hmm. You know, like, if they wanted to hire four and we only give them a list of three and we can't somehow move other people up the list, it's like, yeah. okay, like we're, they're just unable to hire four. So that doesn't sound right to me. Okay. So that's why I think it has to be like, yeah. they do it one at a time 
and then we essentially just have to certify a new list of three. Yeah. Agreed. How long do we keep the list? It's two years, I believe. Two? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question, Rita. Yeah, it's two years. And then, Amy, the only other question I had on the process was how, with like with the full background investigations, um, do those come back before our rankings or, okay, so we do the rankings and then uh, Chief Hawk will, will bring us, you know, anything that comes up in the background investigation that yeah. That may be disqualifying, and then we decide whether it is or not. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. And I had thought that there was the possibility, the feasibility of getting started on the background investigations, but in talking with Sergeant Igley, who's overseeing that process, it's it's like a two or three day full time job to do one background investigation. So even to start on the 14 that we knew last week. Oh. If you want to get started? He said, no, that's, that's it. I mean, that would take the detectives like all month basically to do the 14. So he said, once we rank them, then they start at the top and work their way down. Yeah. Okay. And maybe if they just know you know, that we still have this, this open question of whether it's just going to be the three or if it's going to be three and then another one and then another one. You know, so they might have to look at, you know, up to five or six candidates. Right. Exactly. Oh, before I forget, too, I sent everyone the code of ethics form. So if you haven't returned it, and June asked Tricia this morning, she said she didn't have it from any of us. So yeah. I have mine here. Basically, I'll when bring you, it down. Yeah, when okay. you come to town hall, turn it in. So Brian and Matt and I can turn ours in today and then read it. Yeah. Can you can you maybe leave some um, some blank ones at the, the station by my, my printer prints illegibly. Yep. And I uh for some reason my Adobe doesn't let me digitally sign documents anymore. I don't know. I don't know why my permissions in do in Adobe changed, but sure. Where do you want those left, David? Uh just at maybe at like the, the front desk of the station or wherever's easiest. I'll I'll you know, I'll make it down sometime over the next few days and. Okay, perfect. And then can everyone confirm that they received the links that Sergeant Egley sent us? Mm -hmm. I did, yes. Okay, perfect. So everyone yeah, has. That worked great. Yeah, I thought so too. And June and Denise did a great job of covering thank up you, all June. the sensitive information. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. It thank was a lot of scanning and organization, so. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. All right, um, town updates, community engagement updates. National Night Out was the first social workers and SROs. Yep, so National Night Out, for you folks who may or may not be aware, we had it last Tuesday evening from five to eight. It was the second one we've participated in, uh, organized and pulled off, uh, well attended um, from the, the young people that I overheard throughout the evening, it sounds like at least for, for, in their eyes, it was a successful event. Um, I believe it was an opportunity for the community and the first responders to engage. And I think we pulled it off successfully again. We had uh, different agencies there, you know, that offer services to the community. Uh, we had certain businesses who enjoy participating and bringing swag that they hand out for the children. Uh, we had, EMS, all three fire departments in the town were represented. Our police department, also members of the North Hills SRT team were there who are my officers. Plus we had a county sheriff here. We had yeah, two, two county policemen that, uh, that were on, on uh, horseback. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was uh, impressive. And at the end, we actually got the visit we didn't think we would from Stat Medevac. Uh, they they oh, landed wow. towards the end of the evening. Oh, they that. yeah they had told me they couldn't make it because of fuel costs. They weren't going to participate this year. And then at seven or seven thirty, they started calling us on the radio saying, "Can you land us?" So uh, I think that was uh, I believe that was a good event. And mm -hmm. great. I saw you know um, 
everybody, Amy was there volunteering for certain, Matt Shipley, Matt, thank you and your wife, they were uh, uh, taking care of the police tent for us. Um, and uh, I just think it was a good evening for everybody involved, I, I, I like to think. We had some unexpected requests from Tom Yeah, yeah, a divisive issue potentially, but yes, uh, there was a politician for those of you who may, who may not have seen it on the news that, that unannounced made, a, made an appearance. Um, but, uh, during his visit, I was raffling off, um, some of the prizes that, uh, like gracious, what well, Lowe's, uh, home improvement, they, they, they've given us grills and fire pits to raffle off the, yeah. you, know, you know, very nice. And Texas Roadhouse has a very good presence here, uh, these first few years as well. Dave and Buster's from Ross Township, they even wanted in on the fun, so they came. Um, so we're, we're, we're getting businesses from, from other communities that want to be part of it. So I think it was a good one. What, uh, social workers, hopefully uh, they are training this week over in Hampton and hopefully we'll have them in house, um, I believe next Monday, but definitely they'll be here. Uh, I don't want to guarantee it, but they should be here next week. You know, we'll, we'll need some time. It's a brand new program here for the town police department. So we'll be, it, there'll be, what do they say? Bumps in the road, I'm sure. But we are working at getting that program off the ground. I have about a 38 or 39 page uh, uh, policy that we're about to implement regarding that. So uh, that's coming up. Uh, and then uh, the other thing was the SROs are back in the schools anticipating the uh, school year to start. So, uh, we're heading into fall and, um, you know, all jets are burning. We're, we're moving forward down here and with this process, I want to thank you folks right now while I have a moment for uh, doing this and being involved in this hiring process, very important. And uh, you all donate your time graciously and thank you. Hey Ryan, quick, quick question. Uh, whoa, I'm getting a lot of feedback. Um, just what's the connection to Hampton for the social work interns? So David, she uh, was the original intern uh, that start, you know, that was part of the program that Hampton actually um, rolled out probably two years ago. Oh, Carolyn, yeah. Carolyn and I have been over there for some of their trainings with Chief Belakovich and Angela Kenbach is her name. And she did such a um, good job over there that Hampton Township hired her full time. And she is not receiving any additional pay, but she, I think it's an allegiance to Slippery Rock University that they were involved in this on the ground level. And she's helping Slippery Rock place interns to, to keep this program kind of um, try to grow it. And okay. uh, so she's just kind of helping me oversee getting it implemented here. I think uh, Sharpsburg and uh, uh, um, among other agencies, Hampton, us. There might I might be forgetting some that are that are trying to get this program you know to grow and uh, so just just her own um, you know uh, willingness to to see it uh, grow and thrive I think David is is why she's involved. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so there'll be two of them. Uh, there is a Victoria and uh, the names escape me now. Um, Victoria Sprang and uh, yeah, you did. Uh, you you might Angela from Hampton was here, and so was Victoria. Um, the other the other young lady was not able to make it, and I don't know why. Uh, Taylor Dietrich is her name. So we'll have two female uh, social work interns that are not being paid. They are here as part of their um, master's degree program with Slippery Rock University. I believe we'll have them uh, until the end of the school year, not just the semester, we should have them the full school year. Uh, I think we're gonna get them each about 15 hours a week about, um, for a total of 30. Some of that may or may not overlap. We haven't finalized um, schedules yet and they're going to obviously have to be flexible because they both are going to school and probably have jobs on top of this um, so we're preparing a space for them down uh, in the police department so that they can interact and engage with the officers and you know information share and such and uh, you know, try to get that program underway here chief will you be will somebody be putting their names mm, sorry 
Will somebody be putting their names out on uh, social or, or the um, platform that the police have and introducing them to the community that way? I'm certain of it, ma'am. Uh, I'm sure that there will be um, on police social media site. We'll probably have them out there. They're, they're, you know, maybe I'll, I'll consult with Angela and see what Hampton did. We're, not that we're following anybody, but see what worked and what didn't over there. Maybe, you know, it, maybe it goes on the town social media sites as well. I don't see why it wouldn't. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Chief, that all sounds fantastic. Thanks so much for doing all that. Yeah, and, uh, really good. I really think that's super. It sounds like you guys have it completely under control, but if you need any help, by all means, you know I'm personally interested in this in particular. So feel free to reach out to me if you have any needs whatsoever. Me too. Thank you. I was curious about the upcoming rib eating contest. Are you going to participate in that? <laughs> I, I was the uh, I, I was part of the reason that we lost last year. So uh, they, there is a, a five officer team that is going against. Are they going against firemen or other so. police departments? Yeah, this again is Texas Roadhouse. They're they're very engaged in the community and trying to raise money for good causes. Uh, I think the winning team ultimately gets a percentage of the sales during a period of time up there that gets donated to their uh, charity of choice. But I will not. I'm, I may be. I may be present to observe, but I will not be participating. Okay. After comments, I don't think we have any public. Um, Amy, you're kind of off mic now. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Any other comments uh, before we move into executive session? Okay, well then we will adjourn this section of the meeting and move into executive session.